And my political sources join me now at the table. That includes CNN's data guru, Harry Enten. And Harry, these numbers are really interesting uh, of what it shows with Harris when it comes to Michigan, Wisconsin. She is ahead of Trump in those states when you, when you look at the numbers, not just overall, but also on some key issues. It seems deadlocked in Pennsylvania, though. What stood out to you in this new poll? I think what stood out to me is that the races haven't moved at all, not one iota. You go back to August, the numbers in all three states look exactly the same as they do now. And you have to ask yourself, when these campaigns are spending all this gosh darn money on the air, especially in Pennsylvania, and it's just a dead heat. So now, as we stand less than a week from the election, I continuously say, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. And I also continuously say, I have no idea what the heck is going to happen. And people call me a waffler for that. But I'm just being honest with folks. I have no idea. This is the tightest election I've ever seen. Well, at least they call you that to your face and That's not true. behind your back. But OK, when I was looking at these numbers, what stood out to me as the non-data guru mm -hmm. was what voters feel in the blue wall, which is so important, about Harris and the economy. Because she's actually doing a, a lot better than most people might expect in Michigan and in Wisconsin. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the economic numbers, look, Donald Trump leads on the economy in all three of those states, but the leads in Wisconsin and Michigan are quite small. They're significantly smaller than they are nationally, and I think that that gives you an understanding of why Harris is doing so well, at least in our particular polls, because this is the issue that Donald Trump is supposed to dominate on. We continuously see voters are saying this is the top issue for him. If he's only leading by a handful in Wisconsin and Michigan, and let's just say on election day it ends up that Pennsylvania is the same thing. He simply put, can't win this election. He really should be having double-digit leads on the economy, given Harris's strength on a slew of other issues. I mean, David Axrod, when you look at these numbers and see that she is doing better on the economy, I mean, that is not the common, con you know, idea of how she is with, with well, voters. Well, she's been whittling away at that number, not just in this poll, but in other polls. But I think that their strategy has been not just to uh, not just to try and whittle the lead down in that category, but also to make the case that who, uh, of who's going to fight for you in the economy. You know, in 2012, mm. Caitlin, uh, Barack Obama lost this measure on election day in exit polls to Mitt Romney and won the election. Why? Because people thought he's going to fight for me in this economy. So, yeah, Romney may run the macro economy better, but who's going to fight for me in the economy? Barack Obama. I think she's going for the same strategy here, and I think it's showing some, some uh, benefit. Well, and in Michigan, the Trump team, to me, has been saying they feel really good about Michigan, that they've been looking at their own numbers. But when, when I look at these, these pollings, Jamal, and the new numbers that are coming out, Michigan is a little bit closer than, than they may let on you know, publicly when you talk to them. Yeah, Michigan might look like that. I was in Michigan last weekend. I'm from there. I was there visiting. I got to tell you, I talked to people on the ground. They were feeling very good about the canvassing. They were feeling very good about some of the turnout models that were happening. They were feeling better about the early vote. Now, a month ago, that wasn't the case. People were feeling a little more uh, skeptical about what was going to happen. But the campaign has done a lot of work over the, over the course of a very short period of time. Remember, she wasn't even the nominee three months, four months ago. So they've had to basically rebuild the campaign around her. And one of the things that's true is there are a lot more volunteers with Kamala Harris than there were with Joe Biden. And so they really can leverage those volunteers in the turnout. Well, I mean, it's a veteran of two presidential campaigns. When you look at this and you're, you're looking at the numbers here, uh, if you're a campaign insider, what are you paying the closest attention to in these numbers, whether it's Harris cutting into to Trump's lead on the economy or in Michigan and Wisconsin, you know, she does better on honesty and democracy by by 15 points in some I, cases. I think if you're the Trump campaign, you're not looking at CNN's numbers. You're looking at your own internals. <laughs> and, I, and I honestly think the I think their internals are actually giving them pause because I think they're seeing even more. Look, they have they do have a lot of resources for polling more than public media co media companies have. And, and they're probably seeing the same things that you guys are talking about, which is that um, there is real groundswell in the early vote. There is real enthusiasm, which is hard to measure. I have I have heard from Republicans that there is concern at the Trump campaign amongst the operatives that actually really do know the political wherewithal uh, that, that, that the turnout and enthusiasm numbers are where they can need I to be. Echo, okay. so can I could just echo something Harry said? Yeah. Nobody knows gonna... what the hell's going to happen. <laughs> this, is a, this is a really, really close election. All of these states, and, and I, with all due respect, I, I have a lot of respect for the CNN pollsters, but <laughs> you look at the, you aggregate these polls, and when you aggregate them, they're too close to call, and they're all going to be too close to call, and we're going to know in 
sometime next week, hopefully, what the answer is. But I think there are some imponderables here. Is there a hidden vote yep. among uh, Republican women and, 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 and uh, white non-college uh, women for her? Is there this, uh, are we going to see the same effect we've seen in the last elections where Trump produces a vote that pollster, that has eluded pollsters? A lot of the pollsters say we've done so much to guard against that that we may have overcranked. Uh, that possibility. So I think there are a few things that are going on. Number one, if you tally up all the states in the Electoral College and try and project out what's going to happen, I've done that. I've done that for every election since 72. At this particular point, it's the closest race when you tally up the electoral map since 1972. But Hold more. On. Yeah, I, I want to listen to Harris Harry. Just pause that thought. She's speaking in Wisconsin right now. Who is unstable, <laughs> obsessed, obsessed with revenge. Consumed with grievance and out for unchecked power. And in less than 90 days, it's either going to be him or me in the Oval Office. And here's what, here's what you know, and it's here's what we know. If he is elected, it's not going to happen, but if he were elected, on day one, Donald Trump would walk into that office with an enemies list. You know, he talks about the enemies from within. When I am elected, I will walk in with a to-do list focused on your And that's Vice President Harris echoing a message we heard from her in prime time last night as she says that if Donald Trump is reelected, he will have an enemies list from the Oval Office. She argues she'll have a to-do list. A and back here now with my political sources, Axe, earlier at Trump's rally, he played a supercut of Harris's speech last night, just saying his name uh, dozens of times. Obviously, I mean, it's not surprising she said his name a lot, but hear, hearing her now talking about turning the page, um, these are the final messages that they are bringing to, to voters in places like Wisconsin. I actually think the message that she's landed on here is the right message, which is, uh, you know, beyond all the policy prescriptions, the question is, who do you wake up every morning thinking about? Are you thinking about yourself and exacting vengeance on others? Or are you thinking about people who are struggling out there working families trying to get by and what you can do to help. And I think ultimately you have to assign a cost to Trump's behavior to people who are worried about their own welfare out there, their own ability to make a living. And I think that is the, 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 uh, that is the question that they should be asking themselves. Who's actually going to do the work and fight for me and who's going to be up tweeting and, and trying to jail people? I think you Trump know, posted at 237 on Truth <laughs> Social last night when yeah. I when I Normal woke person. up this morning and Normal checked. Person. We used to have this thing. We used to have this thing, and you know this. There used to be ads about what happen, who's gonna the be what, how's the president's gonna behave when the 3 a.m. calls about some crisis in the world. Like Trump will be up tweeting, creating problems, not solving them at, at three in the morning. And I think that's something people should consider. You know, Caitlin, we're going back and forth a second ago about you know what might happen and you know what's happening in these numbers. I have a suspicion, though, that the way Trump is behaving is a little bit of a tell. I think he's nervous. I think the day the enemies list statement came out, I think he knows that he's got to get more of his people to turn out. And in order to get them to turn out, he's got to torque it up a little bit. And it's just like any other drug. <laughs> to get people to get more animated, you got to give them more stuff to get them hotter and happier. And I think that's what he's doing. And he knows that if he doesn't get his people to turn out, this thing doesn't work out. And a lot of those voters are very hard to turn out. He's trying to get these low propensity men to show up. It's a very hard thing to do. You got to work them. You got to show up. You got to call them. You got to move them. Democrats do that a lot. Republicans don't have a lot of experience. I'll, I'll keep it quick. Uh, you know, I went back. The last two elections, the uh, Republican Party was underestimated. You know how many times the same party has been underestimated three presidential elections in a row? Zero. Zero. Pollsters oftentimes will actually overcompensate no. for their past errors. Don't be shocked if Kamala Harris is actually underestimated come next week.